Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a genuine anomaly in the classical music industry. It is Herbert Blomstedt conducting Mozart symphonies 39, 40, and 41. Now, this reveals a great deal about the weirdness of the industry and its predilections, above and beyond the quality of the performances, which is variable, and we'll get to that in a moment. This is from, let's see, it's the Bavarian Radio Symphony Orchestra, and it's part of Bavarian Radio, which has published the disc. Now, they have huge piles of money. I mean absurd, ridiculous quantities of money, so that they can piss it away on anything that they really want. Now, they've already done some pissing here. And what I mean by that is they have released Blomstedt doing Mozart 40 and 41. I reviewed that disc for ClassicsToday.com. You can go and have a look at that review if it interests you. Number 40 was a beautiful performance, absolutely gorgeous, wonderfully recorded, sparklingly played, beautifully balanced, poised, elegant, gracious. It had everything going for it. The Jupiter, on the other hand, number 41, eh, not so much. It was it was a little bit on the colorless side, a little bit you know lacking the same incisiveness of rhythm. The trumpets and drums weren't cutting the way they should. Uh, the finale didn't have that that contrapuntal sparkle. It had clarity, but a, a tendency to heaviness and some real dead spots when the when the counterpoint sort of slowed down a little bit. It, it, it wasn't bad. It just wasn't as good as number 40. So it was, a, it was a decent disc. And I said so. So what has happened? Now, these people have decided to make a two CD set out of that single CD by adding a very not special recording of Symphony Number no. 39. Now, 39 is, first and foremost, as you probably know, the Mozart Symphony with clarinets instead of oboes. They color the whole work. And the woodwind writing generally is, is of extreme sophistication and beauty, and you really want to hear those woodwinds. And you really don't hear those woodwinds. If you want to hear those woodwinds, you can get Blomstedt on Dead On with the Staatskapelle Dresden. And what a difference in the sound, the clarity of texture, of balance. This, again, is good. It's not terrible. There's nothing unmusical about it. It's, it's very nice. But it's not, it's not special. It's not extraordinary. And that brings up the next point. And that's this. Blomstedt is one of those conductors who now has a certain mystique surrounding him because he's like a billion years old and he's still working. And like so many conductors um, of that age, you know, they have tended to, to reduce their repertoire, at least on disc, at least what we hear of them in general public consumption. And then there are other things on YouTube and whatnot, I know. But he's not doing interesting radical things, and he doesn't seem to be doing a lot that requires a lot of stamina. Um, he's doing things that he loves, clearly. He's returning to the standard classical canon and traveling around, guest conducting, doing the same old, same old. Now, some conductors really had something special to say about the same old, same old. I mean, Gunter Vond was one of them. You know, he was, he was somebody who could do a Mozart symphony and really, really bring something new to it. Blomstedt can do that sometimes, not all the time. I mean, his recent Brahms cycle was rather boring. He just did a Mahler Ninth in Bamberg. That was new to his discography, but it was a snooze halfway, at least parts of it were. You know, he's, he's, he's not the kind of conductor. He's a very self-effacing character who's going, to, who's going to make you sit up and go, wow, in repertoire that you've heard a million times. It may be, for example, in the 40th Symphony that he does it once in a while but not all the time. And I mean this with the greatest respect because he's a wonderful musician. Uh, you know, he's made fabulous recordings. I've enjoyed following his career tremendously. His integrity is absolutely unquestioned. You know, he deserves respect, but, but you know, the facts are the facts. The result is what it is. And we have to make the necessary comparisons to, you know, other versions out there, very, very great versions by very many other conductors. And by that standard, these are good. For a man of 175 years old, they may be amazing. 
but they're not competitive with the best aside from symphony number no. 40. But even more strangely, why take that disc of numbers 40 and 41 and reissue it with number 39 as a two disc thing? I mean, maybe it's a special price. I get it. I mean, disc two only has the Jupiter symphony. So, that, you know, it's, it's a long performance of the Jupiter symphony because he takes, you know, the second half repeats and things like that, the finale and and a few of them, and you know the slow movements and whatnot. So it gets to be long. It's like a thirty-nine minute performance at tempos that are not unusually slow. So yeah, I mean it's 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 big, but even so, even so, I find this to be a somewhat um, strange release, one that doesn't really doesn't really say anything essential about the music, particularly if you if you already own forty and forty-one as I do. Why on earth would you go out and get this? And if you didn't get that, are you getting anything really special by getting this one? Well, you get one more performance of a Mozart symphony that's not amazing. And did they make a mistake the first time at Bavarian Radio? Do they care? Because they're just subsidized to the hilt and they have piles of money to, to throw away on projects like this? I don't understand that at all. This is something you listen to on a streaming service. That's how I did, actually. I had this, but I didn't even bother. I I listened to I listened to it on, I don't know, what was it, Apple Music or Amazon or something. I mean, I've been using my streaming streaming subscriptions now a little bit more frequently because I now have in my wonderful new home here, I have Sonos and I can I can program this stuff to pop up in my living room or in the bedroom or out on the patio. It's so much fun. I can run around the house listening to these things. So yeah, and I have this, which I can also test against the quality of the downloads, the digital services. But I, the point is, the point is that Blomstedt is, is fitfully at his best here. And the production itself is one of those things that, that, I mean, couldn't those resources have been spent elsewhere doing something more interesting than just more of this stuff? I have to say, just saying, as they say in the biz. So keep on listening, friends, and thanks so much for joining me. Take care.